I think we could probably leave him in this bunker all day and he won't get that ball out. I mean, that's just, well. But we see it all the time. If this golfer reminds you of yourself on occasions, if you struggle to get out, if you hit those heavy shots and then sometimes you blade it across the green, oh, come on, just at least get out on the green then I think I can help you because in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five most common bunker mistakes that I see, and more importantly, some simple tips on how you can eradicate them from your game. Well, that's one way of doing it. So just before we get any further, we need to clear up, that wasn't me at the start of the video, just someone looks just like me, but obviously a, a poor bunker player, I would never, ever do that in a bunker. Five most common bunker mistakes is what we are covering in this video. So if that golfer does remind you of yourself at times, we can fix that in this video with five of the mistakes, but more importantly, five simple fixes that can really, really help you. Just before we get started into tip number one, if you're new here, we'd love you to be part of this channel. There is a subscribe link uh, somewhere down below. You click that and then hit the little bell icon as well. That just means you'll be notified each time I do release a new video. And I really believe these can help you play some better golf and more importantly, enjoy your time out on the course a little bit more as you're doing that. So let's get started with the first most common mistake that I see in the bunkers. So this first mistake is all to do with the club face and how we set it at a dress uh, and how we take our grip. I think many golfers, you know, and you can help me and let me know in the comments box, would be aware that we need that club face to be open when we're playing a bunker shot. It does lots of things. It gives the club more loft, which helps us get over any high lips. Not particularly the case here, but if we have, it helps with that. And probably more importantly, it starts to expose the bounce or the trailing edge gets lower than the leading edge. And that is super important in a bunker shot. Really hard to play these shots when the leading edge is lower. We get lots of digging and it really becomes hard to get the ball out. So having the bounce exposure and the trailing edge lower really helps us. In order to do that, we have to open the club face. Now, if you watch any great bunker players, when they open the face, they will open it. And I'm talking, you know, a good, whatever that is, 45, 50 degrees, and then they will place their hands on the golf club. So my grip is normal. It's a normal grip that I would use for any other golf shot. But the club face obviously is rotated way out to the right. Now, there's kind of two faults I see here. Number one is the golfer who opens the face, but they open it maybe this far. And anything more than that just puts them way out their comfort zone. So the first fault is just not opening the club face enough. And the second one I see is when a golfer will place their hands on the club and then open the face. Now, this is certainly as open as we would like it, but in the swing, the hands are going to return kind of back to this position and the face is going to be square. So we have to get that face open. The easiest way for me to explain that and show you how to do it is you should be able to have sand on the club face at a dress. So what I mean by that, if I was to scoop some sand up, I have to keep the sand on. Now, when I keep the sand on, that really feels like to me, I've got to have that face super open. As soon as I start to square the face, the sand drops off. You can think about that with a golf ball as well. If I had that golf ball, and I had to sort of scoop that golf ball up and keep it on the club face. It's how open does that club need to be for me to have that ball on the club face. That's a great visual for you. If it's slightly more closed, the ball falls off. So now if it to you feels like it's a long way out of your comfort zone, then that just might mean you need a little bit more time, the bunkers, a little bit more practice because for many golfers, it does feel very strange to have the face open. However, if you can get comfortable with it, it really will help as you start to develop your golf, your bunker technique and it's gonna help you get these golf shots out. So job number one, open the club face a lot, then take your grip and that is gonna help you splash the ball out most times. Right, mistake number two, alignment. We've spoken about the club face, having that in position, but alignment is something I see golfers get wrong all too often. And there's probably a good reason why. For years and years and years, and I was taught this myself, we were told in bunkers to align yourself extremely left until that club face that you had opened at the start started to point back at the target. So we were told to open the club face and then turn yourself until the club points at the target. Uh, and that's getting me aligned significantly left of target. Now what that does, it means that when you swing the golf club, you're cutting across the golf ball. Cutting across the golf ball is not the best way to get energy from the club to the ball. So what happens is we end up using from this very open position, a lot of energy 
and we really struggled to advance the ball. And when I was doing those little demonstrations at the start, which wasn't me, remember, that was what I was trying to do to hit that shot. I was aiming well left and sliding the club across the golf ball. It's really difficult to get the ball out. You can do, but what it tends to mean is that you need lots and lots of speed. And I'm talking, you know, hitting the ball as hard as you can. And you have to hold the club off to get it to go anywhere near the target. So even though I'm going to have this club face extremely open, as we've said, some 45, 50 degrees, notice how I'm aiming my body pretty much towards that flag. The rule in the bunker is that the ball will go wherever your club swings as a general rule. So provided I swing this club towards that flag, that is where the ball will go. So stand square, even though you've got the club face way, way open. Number three, ball position and weight distribution. I'm gonna put these together because they often are linked and get one wrong and you're often gonna get the other wrong. What are we looking for? Well, if I was looking to play a pretty standard greenside bunker shot, I would want that ball pretty forward in my stance, so maybe the width of my wedge inside my lead heel. And I would like to have my weight favoring that lead side. And when I say favoring, I mean, we can get that quite a long way into that lead side. Probably I'm feeling some almost 70, 75% there. And I'd almost rather you go more into that lead side than anything into that trail side at all. The relationship between where you position your weight and where you have the ball in relationship to your feet is really key in determining where that club enters the sand. And where that club enters the sand is really important. It's almost the most important thing to get right when looking to extract the ball from the bunker. So what do we see? Lots of weight on the back leg because often we see these lips and we know we've got to hit the sand and we want that ball to go high so we kind of see a lot of this. Or just the ball not being positioned correctly. Either of those or both of those is going to make consistent entry to the sand really difficult for you. The best bunker players have a perfectly consistent entry to the sand. Now, the reality is you don't have to hit an exact point behind the sand, behind the ball. You can hit three inches, four inches, five inches even, but you need to do it consistently. And the key to that is making sure your address is correct. As soon as I have, let's say the ball too far forward and my weight on this back leg, I basically created a situation where the club is gonna enter the sand too soon. Therefore, what often happens is the club comes out of the sand And you can see what's happened there. You heard that different noise and that ball has gone scooting over the back of the green. And I actually hit the sand far too early, even though the club hit the ball. And often we hear that club hit the ball, we hear that clicky noise, and we think I didn't hit enough sand or I hit the ball first. Completely the opposite. I hit too much sand too early. The club went into the sand, out the sand, bladed the ball over the back. So get that ball one club head width inside your lead heel and set your weight around 70% onto that lead side. That is absolutely vital to ensure good entry into the sand. Point number four, length of swing. We hit bunker shots by hitting the sand before the ball. The ball therefore comes out on a cushion of sand. The energy in our club gets sapped by the sand. It gets absorbed by the sand. So we really struggle to get much of that speed and that energy into the golf ball. And what that means is that even if I wanted to hit this ball, you know, some 10, 15 yards through the air, I need a fair bit of speed down at impact. What happens with bunker shots very commonly is the golf swing gets a little bit too short. Now, it's hard to know why this is the case, but it would make sense that, you know, if the flag is only some 10, 15 yards away, a shorter swing would kind of make sense. It doesn't feel particularly natural to make a longer swing to hit the ball a short distance. That's where your practice comes in. Watch as I hit this bunker shot, and I'm gonna try and hit this, uh, I'm almost gonna try and do this a little bit more extreme, but just look at the length of my backswing relative to how far the ball carries. It's only carried probably some 10 to 12 yards, but you can just see the length of my swing there. And I needed that to be able to give me the time to generate the speed down at impact to get that ball out. So a short backswing is really common. Short backswing often relates to then a quick transition, really hard to get the entry point correct, really difficult to get the height and the distance. So in more cases than not, I'm asking a good golfer to make a longer backswing. It helps you with creating some wrist set, which is good for power, helps you with rotating the body, and you're starting to build potential power and speed, which we then need to release 
down onto the golf ball. So the common fault I see as number four is a backswing which is too short. I want you to feel like you lengthen it. A great way to do that is as you take your setup, put a line in the sand behind your back foot. And I want you to ensure that the grip is pointing behind that line in the backswing. What do I mean by that? Well, if I go down the handle, where does that grip point? Down in front of me. Where does that grip point? Out behind the line. Just a really simple visual to help me feel like I get enough length in the swing by getting the grip to point behind that line. And that's gonna ensure that I've got the potential speed to get that ball out with some good height as well. And point number five, what is the club doing to the sand? Really common, this one. The club should be going through the sand and the idea in you, you should have is that the sand is being taken from the bunker out onto the green. I'm hitting the sand onto the green. What I say and I hear all too often is I see golfers saying things like, I'm trying to hit into the sand. Straight away, that tells me that the concepts and ideas are incorrect. If we try and hit into the sand, the ball's not gonna come out because the energy of the club is going downwards. We don't want it to go downwards. We want it to get projected out towards the flag in front of me. So a really, really simple idea you can have in the bunkers, and this is one of my, my go-to tips for anybody struggling, is just have the sensation that the sand that's around the ball, you're gonna put that sand on the green. My focus is can I move the sand onto the green? I am not trying to hit into the sand. That's a terrible thing to do. It's not gonna help you get out of bunkers. So five tips that can really help you get out the bunkers. The idea there was to keep them relatively simple that you can take straight to the course if you're really, really struggling like that golfer was at the start of the video that remember wasn't me at all. Right, thanks for watching. Usual stuff is down below. Really hope there's some stuff and some ideas in this video you can take straight to the golf course and help you play better next time you get out there. Comments box down there, like button. Remember to hit that subscribe link. Love you to be part of the channel and hopefully we'll see you back here again for a future video. Thanks for watching.